Welcome to the Catholic Forge, a conversational podcast where we gather to explore our Catholic faith and discuss how it forms our lives. All are welcome to join in this conversation and journey. Thank you for listening. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. This is Eric in West Virginia. I'm John in Illinois, the birthplace of the Twinkie. And I'm Ben in <laughs> Kentucky. I thought you were going to do serious this time. No joke. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done a serious one yet? Uh, maybe in the beginning. The the pumpkins were serious. That was, they, you know, that, that's, that, that's, that. <laughs> so you're going to relate it to the episode every time, like thematically? No, no, I, I make no, no such okay. claim. <laughs> right. Is that even true about the Twinkie? Yes, yes, yeah. It's a, uh, 1930. Ah. I didn't know that. Welcome to the Catholic Forge, celebrating the heritage of the Twinkie since 1930. <laughs> On this episode, we continue our top 10 must-have spiritual resource series, and we're going to get to hear Ben's list, get to know Ben a little better, and uh, and kind of get an insight into some of the things that he would consider valuable resources. And as we mentioned before in uh, the episode with my top 10, when we came to shaping the lists, we wanted to stay away from them being just, you know, a top 10 Christian books or something like that. And so we could, we kind of put some modifiers in there and we sort of looked at like, well, if you remember from the episode with my list, you know, like there was a place and there was an object and there was an experience trying to diversify things. And so, um, so we'll see what, uh, what Ben, um, has to offer. And, and I have no idea what he's going to say. He didn't even spoil anything in the pregame show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so I'm excited for that. Um, and so, Ben, uh, before you begin with number ten, can you tell us at all, like how you came to generate this list? Was was there a certain process you went through, or was it, you know, flipping a coin, or, or you know, sh- tell yeah. us? No, I really just tried to decide between did I want it to be things that I used on a current basis in my spiritual life, you know, daily or at least weekly. Or did I want to go way back to things that had an impact on me? Kind of, I think a few years on your list were that way. And I liked that a lot, the formative type. But I went with, I tried to keep it current of things that Hmm. I felt really influenced me or or that I fall back on, you know, at least weekly uh, in my spiritual life. So from that and then our kind of loose guidelines there, that's the only criteria I stuck to or the only process I used in, in thinking it up. So... Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's hear it. All right. If you guys are ready, we'll get get started here. Number 10. Here we go. Number 10 is an experience, and that is men's conferences. Oh, I don't know okay. if you guys have done one, but the I've only been to two the last two years in a row, and uh, the diocese puts it on, invites speakers. It's like a day-long thing on a Saturday, mm-hmm. and... I almost didn't go two years ago. The first one I went to, I almost didn't go to. And my brother and I went together and it was an awesome experience. I mean, to be, they were probably, it wasn't a huge crowd. It was two, 300 men maybe, but to just be there and, you know, see faces that maybe I, I had seen around the, my own parish or the diocese before, but young Mm -hmm. guys, old guys, it was just really, really invigorating to be you know, to, to see these men that came out on a Saturday kind of took special time out and, you know, their faith meant something to them. And then to leave after just the message the speakers give and and conversations over lunch and reconciliation, it was just a really moving experience. And then, so, of course, I, I went back last year when they offered it again. This year, one's coming up in February. Um, actually, Scott Hahn is speaking at this year's. How so, wonderful. Yeah, so mm. if you're... If you're in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky, Scott Hahn, <laughs> come to the men's conference. <laughs> so That's I'm awesome. looking looking really forward to that. But uh, you guys ever do your, I don't know, do all dioceses do men's conferences or is it a an individual thing? I don't know. Yeah, I think I think it's an individual thing. Um, some dioceses do, and um, some t- some will do okay. them bi biannually or or mm-hmm. you know not even every year. So yeah. They're they're offered okay. and they're offered out through different organizations too. But wow, yeah, what I had, hadn't even thought of concluding that. I, I want to steal that from my list because what a powerful <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, when I, the, oh, please no, no, go ahead, Eric. 
Well, I, I only wanted to say that another expression, um, not a retreat, but of sorts, would be cursillo. Um, uh, oh, right. Even though even though casillos are, are are somewhat shared with families, um, uh, and it's not like it was a boys only kind of thing. This men's conference, you know, maybe there are women there too, uh, to some degree. But the, but the casillo was shared with the family, you know, or with spouses or whatever. But definitely, uh, uh, specifically for men. But then there's also the the women's casillo program. I I just had a quick question, if you don't mind. Um, oh yeah. W- what about the conference made it specifically for gentlemen? I think it was, uh, well, it was in our diocese, it was actually put on by a group called the Catholic Men Servant Leaders. And its whole mission is about getting men to kind of step up, as it, in the name, servant leaders, um, sure. both in their families and their parishes, uh, to really step up as men and, and be and lead through service, so to speak. You should give them our um, business card uh, at the end of the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll make sure and get it to Scott Hahn. He get it circulated there. Um, you tell him, you tell him that John's one of the hosts, and he'll say, "John Jelinek? Well, <laughs> of course, John Jelinek. That he, is true. He carved, he carved my Thanksgiving turkey. No, one he year. carved the turkey. Right. But, uh... <laughs> You've had Thanksgiving dinner with him? Yes, I did. Yeah. Wow, I've actually been meaning to ask you if you ever had him in class because since you went to uh, to Steubenville, yeah, but I didn't know. Just about every semester, I made sure I, I had a, a Dr. Han class. Um, just a man, wonderful awesome experience. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. They, I've got to hand it to this this uh, group here, though. I mean, they've the two years that I've gone, they've gotten some awesome speakers. The first year, uh, George Weigel was one of the speakers. You know, uh, yeah, Pope John Paul II's biographer. So mm, it's wow. uh, they don't mess around. I mean, they they get some some pretty awesome guys to come in. Sweet, but. So yeah, they. I also had a thought there. Number ten, right off the bat, violates my criteria. Obviously, I don't use the men's conference on a weekly basis. It's a once a year thing. <laughs> sure, sure. But uh, it was an experience, and I wanted to get the an fruits experience of it on the affect list you there. weekly. Yeah, yeah. I I really am inspired. <laughs> you know, each each yeah. year, man, it's like a shot in the arm when I walk away from it. But oh, good. All right. All right. So number nine. Is I guess this this could be in the alternative media category a little bit. Okay. I've mentioned the core project before, mm-hmm. the daily emails or uh, video journals from the core project, and they're short. Uh, I, I think three days a week it's a blog, two days a week it's a video, or I might have that flipped, but they're just short little inspirations, theology to body related. They will use. Uh, sometimes it's current topics like uh, back during all the the gender bathroom fiasco in the news, you know, when that was a, a yeah. big hot topic, you yeah. know, that particular week he might, his post might be related to that current news event or whatever and how it relates to theology of the body. But those are really inspirational because I, I mean, I can't stress how formative theology of the body has been in my life, but in day-to-day life and our culture it's easy to forget the the impact of it, forget the magnitude of it. So just these quick little daily emails, they keep me going as far as little reminders and stuff. Um, are you are you guys on any kind of mailing list or anything like that? Any kind of daily devotional type thing? I don't have a daily one. I, I do get Dr. Han's um, we, weekly, or he sends, comes, sends out a thing monthly and it has readings, the readings for Sunday on it. So. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And actually the core project, he'll, he'll throw that in. I think on Fridays it will have the upcoming, uh, gospel reading and he'll have a commentary on that. So number eight podcast. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and you're in the right place. <laughs> I'd like to say this one, but you know, yeah. not, not trying to knock us, but it's, it's not on my, uh, weekly inspirational list. <laughs> we, I, and I've kind of covered this in I think our very first episode, Why Podcast, mm. um, just the importance they've had in my life, giving that Catholic community when I'm at work or in the car or whatever, you know, just hearing what other Catholics around the country or even the world have to say, what they're, what's on their mind, you know, how they're dealing with problems or whatever. So um, there's been, a, a if I were to name a few key ones that are like weekly listening, definitely the word on fire with Bishop Barron. And then in, in the last few months, something called Pints with Aquinas with Matt Frad. 
uh, it's an awesome way, a practical way for somebody like me to get into the Summa. Uh, cause juggling work and family, I'm, I'm just not going to sit down and, and plow through the whole Summa. So, mm-hmm. but Matt Frad does it for me. He, these like little 20 <laughs> minute podcast, he'll take a question from the Summa every podcast dive into it dissect it kind of uh it's just him it's no co-host or anything Hmm. but it's incredibly entertaining uh you well with his i feel like when you have an accent you can be more entertaining when you're by yourself you know he's got that australian accent but that's why all of our (laughs) listeners are from england and australia they they appreciate our american accent yeah (laughs) yeah it's a novelty for for them (laughs) all right so uh, anything on that podcast? <laughs> it's a it's a wonderful thing. Yeah, it's it's part of that interior dialogue. There's so much that we when we hear others say what we're thinking and feeling, they help articulate it. It helps to reaffirm us to in our direction. It's it's a, it's a wonderful tool and yeah. so easy to use. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, and that, and that's not just a plug to get people to think that uh that this show is more valuable. It's it, that was, that was a part of my life before we even created this. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. why we created Absolutely. this. Yeah, well, yep, yeah yep, exactly. Yep. That saw the need for it. But. Mm-hmm. All right. So number seven is a, a tricky one in my life. It's the rosary. Okay. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and lie and pretend like I pray the rosary daily, or I'm ashamed to say even weekly. It's kind of a, a spiritual challenge for me. I'm, I don't know what it is about my makeup, but I'm not naturally drawn to the rosary. I'm not inclined to to pray it, but I love it just the same. Hmm. And I like every everything that I've ever read about it as far. I mean, John Paul II's, you know, his exhortations to pray the rosary and the importance. I agree with all of it. I believe all of it. And the times that I do pray it, the fruit is there. It's, Mm. I mean, it never fails. I walk away feeling so, so peace filled and so just Mm. touched, uh, by the spirit. Mm. But that being said, I still, it's not my go-to. It's like, "Mm, I could do, I could read the Bible or pray the rosary. I'm going to read the Bible or, you know, I, I just shy away from it, but it's still on my list because there's really not a day that goes by. I don't think about it. Even if that's just that I should pray the rosary today. And even if I don't, so it's very much there in my spiritual consciousness and kind of this, this aspiring thing that I want to become more frequent with and more familiar with. Would you, I know you guys, would, would you say, um, sorry to interrupt. Would, would no, you no, no. say like, do you feel the same way about the divine mercy chaplet or the same? No, I don't. And I think it's because it's quicker. So it's, it's less of a time. Sure. And and it's probably partly my the way my brain works too because when i do pray the rosary i pray it slowly and i'm not knocking anyone who prays it quickly i'm just i for for it to really sink in with me and to be really to really be able to feel like i'm truly meditating on the mysteries yeah. i do i do say each hail mary very slowly and deliberately mm-hmm. so it's not it might a, a whole rosary might take me 35 minutes Whereas I know a lot of people can burn through it in 15 minutes, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so it is a time commitment. It's, it's like, I think, okay, sure. this, this sure. is going to be 30, 35 minutes. So really, and, and this, I'm glad you asked that because a compromise that I make a lot of days, I will just pray one decade, you know, I can't sure. say I prayed the whole rosary that day, but I'll just pick a mystery. I'll pray one decade. And that actually, that works really well for me. At least it makes me feel still in touch with the prayer, but if I don't have a half hour, it's a, it's better than nothing. You know, one more question. Yeah. Would you say that you would be more inclined to participate in a sung musical version of the rosary? Hmm. I, I, John, you get that sass out of here. (laughs) Get that out of here. I could see him making faces over on like on the screen. Let let, let me just, I, I wrote a, um, a setting of the Divine Mercy Chaplet while I was there in Kentucky. Very warmly received. Very nice. Hmm. Um, and we used it during the uh, the Year of Faith. Is that what it was called? <laughs> Three years ago was the Year of Faith. And uh, um, and so, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was, I mean, it was, it was, it was good. And people seemed to respond to it well and th- thinking that was, you know, that was helpful. And ever since then, I always thought, 
if I wrote a musical City on the Rosary, A, could it work? And B, would people respond to it? Like singing along with it or listening to it or something like that. Consider this field research. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. No, I've never thought about it. But, you know, because a song, you can almost sing the words. It almost, I think, would lend itself better to you know, meditating on the mystery while singing the words because the singing becomes so fluid and and smooth. Um, yeah, that's an interesting thought. I don't know. I, I think I would have to try it to really know if it would work for me or not. But Well, I'm going to go and uh, get to work then. You just, you guys enjoy. <laughs> don't go to bed okay. until it's finished. Uh, oh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that, that's right. a great... John, any... You know. I, I just amen to everything that, that Ben said. Um I, I love both the Rosary and the Divine Mercy Chaplet, but uh, the Rosary, while I would pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet more often because it is shorter, um, <laughs> the, the, um, sure. and it is spectacular, but um, the Rosary, I, I feel like it was one of the most formative prayers for me in that uh, doing the meditations on the life of Christ, particularly the passion of Christ, that meditation yeah. that you do while you're envisioning, you're there present to the crucifixion, I feel like I learn more about the love of God praying the rosary than mm. any other singular activity because it brought me so so present to scripture and in, in spending time delving mm. into it. So for me singing the rosary wouldn't do it because there's something about that that quiet and it's kind of like Ben had talked about it's actually the time for me to to be still be you know to be still mm. before God. And so there's something about the rosary in that and and like Ben I'll often kind of cheat and won't say the whole rosary and we'll just say a decade <laughs> one of the things i found very useful in college with the rosary was um i had about a 10 minute drive from my apartment to uh to the university and i would say two or two and a half decades on the way there and then i'd say you know and now god may my the rest of my day be part of the rosary and on the way home i would complete the rosary so like you know, it was oh, yeah. a way that I could fit it in. And so I didn't have to set aside 35 minutes or something at, at one time. I could kind of break it up to the day and then, sure, uh, sure. you know, so, but, but yeah, I just can't say enough yeah. good about the rosary. Outstanding. Yeah. So it's on there as a, it's kind of like an ongoing goal, you know, to, to, for me to get over that hump, whatever it is in my brain and make it a more frequent part of my week. But mm -hmm. awesome. So number six is a book. All right. And it is called Walking with God, A Journey Through the Bible. And uh, it's by Jeff Cavins and Tim Gray, if you guys have heard of, of the book or of those guys, at least. Uh, and it is it's all about salvation history. It's all about if to anybody who's not familiar, there's this uh, kind of idea of salvation history and especially this this format that they use in this book. It it reduces this the big story of the Bible to 14 main books of the Bible. And ever I read this book two years ago, I think, and it has is literally impacted every day of my life since then. Every time I pick up the Bible, every time I hear the readings at Mass, I'm I'm putting them into a different context because of the, the context that this book gave me of Oh, it, it, it cleared up all the confusion, you know, before, I mean, even though I'd read the Bible, it was all these, I, like, if you just read a book in the old Testament, it's like this isolated event or this isolated group of people. And I, I'm not a scholar. I, I didn't have the knowledge to know how it all connects and especially connecting it all the way up to Jesus, you know, like this, this obscure story in the old Testament and then fast forward however many years to Jesus. But this book did that. It connected all the dots. And now I can, I, I get so much more out of, of scripture and any readings. So it, uh, it's actually on my list. I need to, it's definitely not a book to read once. I, I've got to reread it soon. Just, it's got so many great points. It's, it, cause it's kind of a commentary within itself too. It really opens up the, you know, who's doing what, why they're doing that, the historical context of maybe what this action would have meant to the to the readers of that time period and that kind of thing. So it changed. I mean, and it's really accessible. I mean, these guys are scholars, but it's definitely written for the lay person. It's not too academic. It's not too uh, too hard to to get through. It's only maybe three hundred pages. So, mm -hmm. but 
Have you guys heard of Jeff Cavins, Tim Gray? Yeah, you've actually mentioned it before too, I believe, on the podcast. Uh, I oh, have I? That book? Similar book, uh, not that book, but that that falls in my top ten. Um, kind of the predecessor oh, okay. to that book, actually. Hmm. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I probably have mentioned it. It's man, if I could, yeah, if anybody's wanting to get their head around the Bible better, a book or one similar to it is is a must have. But um, and very much tied to that one, number five as simple as it is, is the Great Adventure Bible Timeline. And this is an actual uh, chart. It's a little fold-out piece of paper that you can get on yep. ascensionpress.com. Mm -hmm. You've seen it, Eric? Yeah, yeah. I have. It's, it's delightful. Oh, it's so awesome. And again, anytime I'm, I'm reading the Bible, if I'm in the book of Samuel or if I'm in you know, wherever I am uh, in Acts or you know Old Testament, New Testament, doesn't matter, I can flip that chart open. And it's just got this perfect timeline from Genesis all the way to the birth of the church and all the key players, the key events that are going on, the the chronology of it. Yeah. And one thing that I found really, I don't know that it increases your Bible study necessarily, but just a cool thing to know is what secular world events were in mm -hmm. line with these. It, it, does, well, it makes the Bible more real, you know, when Absolutely. you see that okay, this is in line with the building of the pyramids, you know, and because the pyramids, that, that's one of those things that nobody questions. People accept that as sure. historical fact. Yeah, absolutely. Whereas the Bible, you get into that and people are like, oh, that didn't really happen. But, so it's really cool to see like, okay, well, while these guys were doing this, the pyramids were being built or whatever the, the case may be. And, yeah. Uh, and it's just such a quick reference. It's, it's about the size of a small novel. And, I mean, it can actually, I sandwich it right in my Bible. So it's always there for quick, quick reference and it kind of it the jeff cavins actually is is tied in with that great adventure timeline so it very nicely goes in with the walking with god book and the stuff i learned in that but so where have you come across it eric do you have one or have you just seen it before i'd seen them and i think that i had made use of one in a bible study i led one time I'd also uh, made use of another resource very comparable in college that I think you had to have for one of the intro to scripture classes. Oh, okay. um, that, that just like you said, was like, you will put this, you will glue this into the back of your textbook and it will never leave it ever. He's like, yes, yeah. sir. Because <laughs> yeah, just, you're right, just to have that sense of, of, of global chronology, anthropology, what's happening, when is it happening, um, in line with the scripture, uh, you're right, it just brings a, a new level of um uh, i don't want to say intimacy but but that nearness with scripture yeah. you know just like you said like oh this is this, it's happening in the real world this is actually happening you know yeah yeah well i just like knowing too uh one thing when you're just reading the bible i mean unless you're really detail oriented and want to read through the generations and do the math i like knowing how much time you know how much time <laughs> did exist between yeah. uh David sure. and Jesus, you know, I don't know, but this timeline, boom, there it is this many years. And, uh, yeah, yeah, really why, why, why couldn't the books just start with 28 days later? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's kind of how the jo gospel of John goes. Yeah. Right. Oh my gosh. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this thing's like five or $6. And if you, you know, if you, yep. if you don't like to read or if you're not, if you don't have the time to read a whole book, I mean, this will still, it, it is a resource of its own. Just seeing the timeline. Mm -hmm. I wish I had known about it because I, mean, I was one of those people who I didn't know any better. The first time I read the Bible, I pretty much read it like a book, you know, cover sure. to cover. And it was hard. And, and while I, yeah, while my eyes went over every word, I didn't get half of what was going on. I didn't understand the context. And so now I've, I've got much better tools to wade through all of that with so so get number six and five together as the bottom line if you can if you're good yeah, that's that's actually serious about scripture study then then you might as well have them both yeah awesome yeah absolutely so number four is the magnificat uh a little publication that is full of the daily mass readings i mean it's it's chock full it's it's like oh, 45 dollars a year i think and it's uh man it's awesome if it's kind of my substitute you know, I've mentioned before on here that I don't get to daily mass like I would like to, but I mean, you can, you can see the prayers that were said at daily mass. You can read the daily readings, whatever feast day it is. There's a little 
bio on the saint of that day. Mm -hmm. There's, there's commentary at the end of it by some great figure through history, whether it be a lay person or a priest or, you know, a doctor of the church and you never know who it's going to be. I've actually my own kind of, uh, I guess, testing myself. I, I found a pattern that I was, I would look at the author first on the commentary and if it was someone I had heard of and that I already greatly loved and res- like if I saw it was, you know, uh, Pope Francis or John Paul II, I, would, I was more inclined to automatically like the commentary. But if it was somebody I'd never <laughs> sure. heard of, then it's like, <laughs> sure. Ah, do, you, do you know what you're talking about? <laughs> so now I do it in reverse. I, I read the words without letting mis- myself see who it was. And sometimes I'm really surprised because I'll, I'll be like reading the words and I'm like, oh, man, this is gosh, this is spot on. You know, I, this is really speaking to me. And then I see that it's like one of my heroes and I'm like, oh, oh cool. Great. You know, yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad I, it was, it's not just because I was biased because I knew who it was, but, but this, it's a great daily devotional. And, uh, sometimes, you know, I have a book of the Bible that I'm working through, but if I, if I'm in between books and I, sometimes, you know, rather than playing roulette with the Bible and, you know, well, what do I want to read today? It's right there. I just do the daily readings or, even if I, I just have time to do the daily gospel, you know, that's one way to fit in the gospel every day. And, um, I don't, my sister got me a subscription to it for my birthday two years ago. And I've, I've renewed it ever since. Cause it's, oh, it's wonderful. awesome. It's pocket yeah. size. I mean, uh, so you sound, Eric, you sound like you've, you've seen it or been in contact with it at least. Yeah. When I was there with you in Kentucky, we got a box full and, uh, and oh, I yeah. grabbed one and enjoyed it for a month. Um, didn't subscribe, should have. I think that my father-in-law did. And I know that another friend at the parish did as well because they had that month with it and, yeah. and got a, got a look firsthand into its efficacy. Um, at, like at our parish now we have, um, the word among us, uh, which is nice. Um, but I think the Magnificat is, is probably the most fleshed out definitively Catholic exhaustive resource um that's available i mean if 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 you're asking what should i put on my table next to the bible and the liturgy of the hours i think the the answer is the magnificat you know absolutely oh um, yeah it's awesome it, it, it just it's so rich and and you and you said it so well like if you can't make it to daily mass but you feel the drive and you want to increase your participation in the liturgy even if you can't go to the liturgy then to still be able to appreciate those prayers and readings absolutely yes that that's a great great item yeah, and actually a quick kind of cool story that um, yeah, it probably doesn't mean much to anybody but me, but <laughs> it it ties together two of my top 10 here. I was in a Panera, uh, I was in downtown Lexington um, and uh, in a Panera on lunch break. And I saw this guy who looked really familiar. And this was just maybe six months ago. And I thought, man, I've where do I know him from? And I couldn't place it. And then he sat down at the bar, you know, away, away from me. And, and then he pulls out a Magnificat and starts reading it. So I was like, that, that helped me narrow my scope. I was like, okay, he's Catholic. <laughs> and, okay. and then it hit me. I met him briefly. I mean, I think we exchanged first names and spoke for a couple of seconds. But I met him briefly at the first men's conference I went to. And, oh, full uh, circle. Here it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I actually walked That's up awesome. to him and, and I was like, hey, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't remember your name, but. I think we met at a men's conference, right? And and sure enough, he totally remembered me. He was like, yeah, yeah, you're from Western Kentucky. And I was like, wow, I, I feel even worse because you remember details about me and I don't remember your name. <laughs> uh, so that was just, it was kind of kind of cool. Awesome. And it just now occurred to me that that's two of my top 10 tied together. But All right, so number three, getting back to the man himself, The Lamb's Supper by Scott Hahn. Oh, oh there it, it is. It's another one of those. I read it once and no mass that I've ever attended has been the same. I think of something that I learned in that book at every Mm -hmm. single mass in particular, if nothing else, when the priest says, lift up your hearts, there's a part in that book that I was lazy. I didn't look it up. I could have quoted it, but it's where he talks about like, if you're, if you're, zoning out if you're not focused this is the moment to refocus when when you hear lift up your hearts things are getting real (laughs) you know so uh sure and that that has stuck with me in every mass 
I mean, if and you guys know, with the best intentions, when you have kids and you are juggling them during mass, you're not always focused. Uh, when like right now, Olive, my 15 month old is so happy that she knows how to walk well now that she wants to always get down and try to run away in the middle of mass. But, but so if I'm wrangling her, if I'm wrestling with her, I hear lift up your hearts and it's like, Zoom. oh, Scott Hahn, time to pay attention. <laughs> you mean your children aren't perfect at mass? I know, unfortunately. <laughs> we, although we've been told all these sweet elderly people after mass are always like, your girls are so well behaved. And we're like, really? I know. They, yeah. they, they're, they're either horrible liars or they're just blind. That's what I've come to conclude. <laughs> yeah. My children ah, are horrible. <laughs> and then, oh, my gosh. oh, your children are so good. No, they're not. But yeah, oh, The Lamb Supper, it, it's a wonderful, wonderful book, yeah. That, yeah, that, and, uh, that almost made my list. It, yeah. it was it was on, it was in the initial twenty, uh, and and certainly for me, I I should read it again because, uh, as, as some may know, I've shared on the podcast before. You know, I, I'm a liturgical musician, and so uh, when mass begins is when I punch in. You know, right? Uh, you know, in a sense, is when I'm on the clock, and so uh, and people know, like people at the parish know, uh, when mass starts. You know, do not speak to me. Do not come and ask me when we're going to meet for rehearsal. Do not uh, come over and ask me, you know, which page this song is, <laughs> is yeah. on or whatever. Because I was like, it's my worship the same as yours. Go sit down, you know. <laughs> uh, um, and and it's very and, – and I think about the, the Lamb's Supper often because – it's it's it can be a rigmarole, just like everyone else goes to work and they get in work mode and off they go. Um, and so to be working with the quotation marks during the Holy Mass in the sacred liturgy, very challenging. And so books like that uh, uh, are, are a wonderful refresher. Absolutely. Yes. You know, in, information doesn't save us, but but the Lamb Supper is one of those books that information helps you to dive deeper into the reality, and and one of those, yeah, those yeah. great books that really help you to experience on a whole other level because you recognize what's going on supremely beyond the the what we had. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and I appreciate these guys like Scott Hahn so much because they're they're obviously so smart and so educated, but yet they can write. They can write a book and keep it under 300 pages and write it in a way that's accessible to almost everyone. I'm not going to say there aren't some people that might still struggle with it, but, um, but you know, it's not just, it's not just, uh, like if I were to sit down with the Summa, you know, <laughs> it's sure. still very accessible. very accessible. Yeah. And, uh, it, so that, that book has just been a huge gift in my life and I actually didn't own it until, christmas when uh eric saint saint uh john that was the book they passed out at christmas uh wow and i wasn't yeah i wasn't even in town but my brother picked up a copy for me because he was at mass he's like yeah i thought you might want this and i was like yes thank you what a special gift for people to come into the knowledge of that to literally stumble into christmas eve mass and yeah and be handed that oh what a treat and think, oh, i'm so glad you told me that that's that's a wonderful uh, a wonderful gift yeah and i think if i'm not mistaken then like the little paper with it or whatever actually said uh, a gift from some very generous parishioners so i think it sure. might have actually been yeah like uh, not even the parish at large but uh yeah, some some individuals who were like, man, we want everybody to have this experience. But it's number three uh, on their list too. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So number number two is another book called In His Spirit by a priest named Richard Hauser. I don't know. You guys ever heard of this? No, it's new to me. Yeah, I hadn't either. It, it was written in the early '80s, kind of an obscure uh, title, I guess, but. It had. I just read it last year, and it's had a life changing effect. It's okay. as you might guess from the name in his spirit, all about prayer, all about the power of the Holy Spirit. But if I had to just condense it real quick, I don't want to spend too long on it because it's it's one of those books that I, I highlighted like every page, all of it. So he he lays out these two main ideas that really hit me, and that is two ways that people can look at at prayer and at God, and one is the self in God model. And the other is the self outside God model. And what he proposes is that the correct healthy way is the self in God. And that's, 
he's got this cool diagram in the book of of uh two triangles where the points are meeting and where our our souls are kind of meeting with the holy spirit within us at all times and and that the any any work we do towards prayer or towards goodness is actually initiated by the holy spirit and we're saying yes to it where he says the more popular and i've definitely been guilty of this that's he was like calling me out on every page the self outside of god model is a more western approach um maybe i don't want to throw puritans under the bus maybe a more puritanical approach but it's it's the more classic i'm down here god's up here if i do everything on my checklist he'll be happy and he'll reward me with grace whereas you know that's a totally mm. distorted and unhealthy way to have a relationship with god and mm. you know cuz where he's kind of a, a tyrant so to speak mm. and and that idea is nothing i hadn't heard but I mean, the way he presents it and just the the practical tips and and prayer and and a kind of a call to be very familiar with the movements of the holy spirit in your daily life in everything in every decision in every person that you come across and he has a i really liked it because it's not just academic and theology it's he's got practical tips of kind of the junk that you've got to clear out of your life if you truly want to be aware of the movements of the spirit that that you can't just lead a typical noisy modern day life where we're inundated with distractions all day every day and and then just think oh yeah i'm going to be aware of the movements of the spirit in my life <laughs> sure as, you know even though i don't ever turn the tv off or whatever the case may be so it's just uh so i'm rambling about this it was a very powerful it's book a too, delightful that, ramble keep going yeah yeah <laughs> But, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to be, it's always so dramatic to say something changed, you know, that's a book changed my life, but there aren't a lot of books I say that about, obviously the ones that I can say that about made the list. So it's, it's changed again every day that I approach prayer, every day mm. that I think about God, something from that book pops back into my head, even if it's in my own error. Like if I'm starting to slip into that, you know, okay, if I just pick myself up by my bootstraps, I can be holy. It, then that book, nope, that's not how it works. You know, uh, mm -hmm. if I am picking myself up by my bootstraps, it's because the Holy Spirit's helping me to do it, you know? Yeah. So I would recommend that highly to anybody in his spirit, Richard Hauser, um, SJ. That's a uh, what the society of Jesus Jesuit. Jesuit is that right? Jesuit. Okay. I find that I gravitate. I like a lot of writings from Jesuit priests. I don't know what that says about me, but I gravitate towards their thought, I think. but They're good. I mean, you know, they have a good track record of, of being prolific <laughs> authors. That's true. Yeah. But, all right, so uh, number one. Oh, here we go. Kind of a, a trick item here that's that's very much inspired and tied in to this last book. Number one is Silence. That is my spiritual resource. I couldn't live without it. It's not as important to everybody. Not everyone prays in the same way. If I, man, it charges my batteries. If I can mm -hmm. find a quiet 20 minutes of no interruptions. And something brilliant he said in that, in number two in that book is being able to put yourself in a place where you know that even the possibility of an interruption isn't going to happen because he talks about how that just knowing that somebody could walk in or somebody sure. the phone could ring just just that knowledge mm. actually can hamper and suppress the deepness of your prayer yeah. and when he said i was like man he this guy knows my brain he's like somebody else i thought i, I was the only one that felt like that like because mm. i've been there so many times that just just the thought that uh, i know the baby's restless she's going to squawk on that monitor any minute just knowing that kind of keeps my prayer at a more superficial level. It's like, I can't dive real deep, but so silence. That's, I don't, I don't feel like any of the other would work for me if I couldn't also find a way to fit it into quiet hmm. silence and, and quiet time. So there it is. The top 10. Wow. That's, big wow. <laughs> That's awesome. What a great encouraging list. Um, it's certainly, uh, uh, gives me some truck speaking of our of our british friends uh, some traction to run with uh 
ideas of, of things I'd like to pursue myself. Um, not just a musical setting of the rosary, which would be delightful, but, uh, um, yeah, even, even just that sense of, 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 a, a return to scripture study. Um, you know, I wish John would light a fire and, uh, and get his little uh, scripture study podcast going for us. You know, I, mean, <laughs> I, I just, just to return to that. Um, but you're also right with the sense of silence. I, <clears throat> I, as you were speaking, I was thinking, you know, I just want like two hours a day where I can just listen to music, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. and, and just let it wash me over, you know? Um, but, but, you know, uh, but, but silence is all the more fruitful. And then certainly what you said about that number two in the book with the Holy spirit, um, John and I were pondering that, I think in the pre-show or another time, how, you know, the, the, the third and forgotten member of the Trinity, um, and, and how wonderful, and John, what did you say? He, he, he it's ironic that he's forgotten because he has all the good stuff or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whatever you said, you know, he, she, it, <laughs> yeah. Everything is, you know, dependent upon the Holy Spirit, the church and the sacraments and prayer and grace and salvation, all of that without, without the Holy Spirit, we don't get it. So, 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 yeah. Yeah. so yeah. dependent. Yeah. But yet, uh, the most forgotten person, in the Trinity. Mm. No, that this book will, yeah, will help you unforget very quickly. And it's, it's short. <laughs> it's, it's, it's 135 pages long. Oh, I mean, uh, so it's, which you need it to be short because you really linger on every page and you reread oh, yeah. sentences and you're like, wow. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, it's, it's very awesome. But. Awesome. Awesome. Well, certainly, um, if you are hearing this episode, then Ben's top 10 list is available to read. Um, at thecatholicforge.com. You can click over there. And if it's possible, we'll provide links to these resources on Amazon or whatever it is. And if you're looking for silence, then please stop this podcast immediately. <laughs> uh, but leave your earbuds in because then it'll be a little bit quieter. But, uh, but wow, I mean, this has been The Catholic Forge. We thank you for listening. And we'd like to close uh, this episode as we close them all with a prayer and a blessing. May God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit bless you, guard you, and lead you to eternal life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you for listening to The Catholic Forge. We hope you've enjoyed this episode and will leave us a positive rating on iTunes, SoundCloud, or YouTube, wherever you listen. Please continue the conversation with us. Let us know some of your top 10 essential spiritual resources on Facebook by searching for The Catholic Forge or on Twitter at Catholic Forge. To submit questions for our mailbag segment, you can reach us at thecatholicforge at gmail.com. And for more information about us or the podcast and to read Ben's top 10 must-have spiritual resources list, www.thecatholicforge.com. We especially thank our compassionate wives for their support of this project. And we thank you very much for listening. <laughs>